Hi, welcome to the last section of this course. Throughout the first four sections, we develop our application, making it more dynamic and robust. However, there's still one missing part that we didn't talk about in order to develop an AMP from start to end. Can you think what that is? Correct, deploying. In this section, we're going to learn about two different ways of deploying our application to the cloud, so you can share it with the world. But before doing that, we need to make a production build and serve our application using a production server. So let's start from there. But in particular, in this video, we're going to talk about how to make a custom production build. We're going to see how we can use Webpack for creating a production build and see how we can apply custom changes only for productions. You might be wondering, what difference does it make a production build than the build that we're already doing? Well, not that much. I mean, it's not that we're going to change our code, right? The code that we're going to ship to production is exactly the same code as we have. The code we're going to ship to production is exactly the same code that we have in our project. However, there are some type of transformations and improvements that we can automatically apply to our code in order to make it more small to upload. Having a smaller bundle have direct consequences on how good or bad our app can work in production. For example, it will reduce the bandwidth needed in order to download our app, which means that it will load faster. So let's see how we can use Webpack for creating a production bundle. Fortunately for us, Webpack has already a command for making production builds. And that's by just passing by the dash p argument to the Webpack command. What this argument actually does is calling Webpack with two different arguments. The first one is called optimize minimize and the other one is called define. Let's take a look at both in detail. What define does is basically defining any variable before building our application. In our case, what we want to do is to define the process.env.node.env to the production value. This is necessary because we might have some configurations or code that we just want to run in development. For example, if you remember our Redux configuration, we're just setting up the Redux logger in the development environment, but we don't want to ship that into production. So that's why the define flag is needed. Let's now talk about the optimize minimize flag. What this flag does is minimizing our JavaScript and switching the loaders also for minimizing. Basically, this is what makes our bundle smaller. Optimizing or minimizing JavaScript code basically means getting rid of all spaces and new lines, changing the variables names to be smaller, and many other type of transformation that does our bundle smaller but our code run in exactly the same way. Under the hood, what this flag does is using Aglify.js plugin and loader options plugin to apply this type of transformations. But this is all we have to know about the webpack-p command. So let's see how it works in action. Go to your code and open your package.json. We already have a build script, right? So everything we are going to do is to add the dash p argument. Now go to your terminal and type yarn build. As you can see in here, now the webpack command is being run with the p flag, which is correct. Now, if we take a look to the bundle details, we can see that our bundle.js now has a size of almost of around 300 kilobytes, which is quite small, even though Webpack is telling me that it's big. Now, if you open your this directory and open your bundle.js file, you will see that this file has now only one line, which means that it was minimized correctly. This directory should be kept away from the git history. So let's add the this name into our git ignore file. That wasn't hard, right? But there's a use case that we're not considering yet. And that is, what happens if I want to apply some particular change into the production build? For example, what if I want to use different APIs when I work in development and in the production build? We cannot do that with the current setup. In the current setup, we just have a webpack.config.js file, which has all our configuration, both for the production build and for the webpack dev server config. In order to apply different changes to production and development, what we should do is to create two different files, one webpack config for development and one webpack config for production. The webpack config.js file now is only going to have the shared configs that both the development and the production configs will share. Now, the dev config is the one that is going to be used by webpack dev server and the webpack dot product and the production config is going to be used of course in the build script make sense well let's get to our code and apply this change the first thing we're going to do is to create a new folder called config we're going to 
add all the configurations inside this folder. So now let's move webpack.config.js file inside our config folder. As we said, what we want to do is to use different APIs in production and development. So what I'm going to define in my environment file is two different attributes, one for development and one for production. We're going to call the current API URL dev API URL, and we're going to define a new one called prod API URL. In this case, we're going to leave them in same value. But just notice that these values can be very different between each other. So now go to your webpack config file. And that's defined in here by making use of the webpack defined plugin. So this is the only part that is going to be different between both configs. All I'm going to do is to cut this part from this file and save my webpack config file. Now it's time to create the webpack.dev config file and the webpack.prod config file. Let's start by creating the dev. What I'm going to do here first is to import the base config from webpack.config.js. And then I'm going to add the defined plugin into this configuration. So I'm going to take this config, I'm going to access the plugin arrays, and I'm going to push a new one, which is going to be the webpack defined plugin. At the end, I'm going to export this edited config. In this case, API URL is not going to be API URL anymore, it's going to be dev API URL. I don't have to import webpack in order to have access to the defined plugin. And that's it. Now it's time to do the same for the webpack.prod config file. Just duplicate this file, call it prod, and instead of using the dev API URL, I'm going to use the prod API URL. Save both files and go to your package.json file. As we said, the build script now is going to use the webpack.prod.config file. And the way we define this is by passing by a config flag pointing to our config file, actually, which is going to be, as we said, webpack.prod.config.js. And the same goes for the webpack dev server file command. But in this case, I'm going to use the dev config. Cool. Now save your file and go to your terminal. And let's see if this is working just as expected. Let's start trying the build script. Okay, apparently we have some type of syntax error in the webpack prod config file. So let's see. The thing that is throwing some errors is this comma over here. So let's erase them from those files. Now try again. Now the build isn't working because it's saying that webpack cannot find the module of the index HTML file. Why? Because we changed where the webpack config file is inside the project. Now, this file is inside the config directory and not in the root of our project. And because of that, this context and this path aren't valid anymore. So what we have to do to fix it is to go one directory back. So now let's try our build script again. Voila, it's working. And our start script again. And it's also working. So congratulations.